hi, hey, hello. So now that DaVinci Resolve actually finally supports ProRes RAW, those of you who wish to shoot RAW are now met with a bit of a dilemma on whether to choose the Blackmagic RAW with the Video Assist 12G or shoot in ProRes RAW with an Atomos Ninja. And I happen to have both a Video Assist and a Ninja V with me today. So I'll be testing both the monitors as well as the actual RAW codecs and how well they're implemented into DaVinci Resolve. So like I said, I'm just gonna start by going over the monitors real quick. If you just want a codec comparison and you don't care about the external monitors at all, feel free to skip to this time in the video. I've been using the Blackmagic Video Assist now for a little bit over two years, and this may be considered a hot take, but I've honestly never really been a huge fan of it. I mean, it works well, it's never failed me in that regard. However, there are some decisions that they made that seem a bit baffling to me. The first of which you may notice here is that it is a five inch monitor. However, the bezels take up a whole bunch of real estate that it actually ends up feeling significantly smaller. I mean, just comparing the two monitors right here, you can see a pretty clear difference. Another decision that I've never really been a huge fan of is the recording media. The Blackmagic Video Assist only takes standard SD cards and it gets pretty expensive. So even if you're looking at just a 512 gigabyte SD card, you're going to be spending over $300. Now it does come with a USB-C port to record to an external SSD. However, for some reason, they decided to place that USB-C port right next to the center mounting screw, making it incompatible with pretty much any monitor mount that you use. The only reason I happened to get it to work is because I used pliers and snipped off this little corner here just to allow for that cable to have access to the port. To mount the SSD, I then took a strip of Velcro and just Velcro it to the back of the camera which is extremely janky and the USB-C cable is actually shorted out in the middle of a shoot on multiple occasions. Now the SSD has never fallen off but it does occasionally give a little bit of resistance to the cable and sometimes I'll get dropped frames and honestly it's all just kind of a big mess. The Ninja V on the other hand has a beautifully streamlined SSD caddy that slides right into the back of the monitor. Plus, you can avoid their proprietary SSDs if you think they're a bit too expensive by buying something like this Andy Cine Lunchbox, which is essentially an SSD holder for significantly cheaper third-party SSDs. Now, as far as navigating each monitor, it's really hard for me to say without any kind of bias that the video assist is easier to navigate because I've been using it for over two years, so I'm very familiar with it. And I'm just now being acquainted with the Ninja V. But for me personally, every Blackmagic menu system is extremely streamlined and simple to use. Meanwhile, with the Ninja V, I found myself having to look up tutorials to even get the Atomos to simply work, which required a complicated registration setup and it was a giant pain if I'm being perfectly honest. Also, in general, navigating the Atomos Ninja seems to be a bit more complicated than necessary, so perhaps take this with a grain of salt, but I would say the workflow and menu system on the Video Assist is far better and easier to use. Now, as far as workflow in DaVinci Resolve, B-RAW is extremely simple. All you have to do is drop your footage into DaVinci Resolve, add a color space transform or whatever LUT you would like to apply to the log footage, and then you click on the RAW tab in the bottom left corner to navigate your controls. Now, it is similar with ProRes RAW, only there is an added step. So if you were to take your footage, throw it into DaVinci Resolve and add a color space transform to it, you will notice that the footage looks pretty terrible. The additional step that you need to do is go into the raw tab down here and go into clip mode and then you have to manually adjust your log curve because for some reason it defaults to HLG. All right, so for the image comparison, I'm going to be using my S52X with the Lumix 20 to 60 and I will be shooting in raw externally, both to the video assist in B-RAW at a five to one compression ratio, as well as the Ninja V in ProRes RAW standard. All right, so just comparing the first two images side by side, a few of the things I'm noticing is that ProRes RAW leans more magenta and desaturated, especially in the greens, when compared against B-RAW's slightly greener and much more saturated image. I don't know if this is a DaVinci Resolve issue or if something is just algorithmically inconsistent as far as the way the image is being processed, but it is something to be mindful of. 
As far as sharpness and detail, I didn't expect there to be this much of a difference, but if we zoom into the image here, you can definitely see, at least before YouTube compression, that there is more detail as well as more noise in the ProRes RAW footage, which is indicative of a less compressed image, which makes sense given the difference between data rates. We're definitely coming back to data rates, by the way. Now, as far as shadow detail goes, in both clips, if we zoom in once again, we can see that there is a much more noticeable noise pattern going on in the ProRes RAW footage. However, it is very fine and granular, one may say filmic, as opposed to B-RAW's blockier and slightly more processed looking noise. Something else that I'm noticing that you may or may not be able to see through YouTube compression is that there's actually so much detail being rendered in the ProRes RAW footage that when zoomed in, I can actually see aliasing in the skin. Whereas in the Blackmagic RAW footage, it all just kind of looks smoothed out and a bit smeary, but in this case, it's actually hiding one of my main problems with my S52X, which is that it is extremely prone to aliasing. However, when we zoom all the way out, that difference is pretty much negligible. Now, I also wanted to do a test to see how well each codec handles white balance adjustments, which is one of the main benefits to shooting in RAW. So just as an example here, I shot this clip at an H.265 codec at 5200 Kelvin. Now, if you were to try to bring this back when shooting in an incorrect white balance in H.265, if you pay attention to the white points and the highlights, in this example, the sky as well as this edge light on me, you can see that everything has shifted warm instead of the neutral highlights you would get if you were to have just shot at 5200 natively. So if we just ignore the slight loss in contrast now that the sun has shifted slightly in frame, you can see that when we bring back the white balance in B-RAW, the image maintains its neutrality. And when we test it in ProRes RAW, it does the same, although it does have that slight magenta shift that I had pointed out earlier. So in case you were wondering, it does appear as though white balance works non-destructively on both codecs in DaVinci Resolve. However, the same cannot be said as far as your raw exposure in post. So if you were to overexpose a clip like I did in this example, you would go into the raw tab here on B-RAW and lower your exposure using the exposure dial. However, with ProRes RAW, you have an exposure bias slider that gives you a bit of a control, but not as much as you would have had when shooting in B-RAW. So for the most part, you'll have to adjust your exposure in the same way that you would if you were to have shot in a non-RAW codec. So overall, as far as image quality goes, I'm gonna have to give the edge to ProRes RAW. It definitely gives you a less processed looking image out the gate. Whereas it looks like B-RAW actually may have some noise reduction going on as evidenced by its somewhat blocky noise pattern. Now, is this difference negligible in 95% of circumstances? Yes, it is. And keeping that in mind, the last comparison I'm going to make here is data rates. So when looking at this chart, even when using medium compression codecs, you can see that at 6K 24 frames per second, you're going to fill up a terabyte worth of hard drive space in somewhere between 56 to 78 minutes. So you'll get a little bit more than an hour when shooting in ProRes RAW. Whereas with B-RAW at a five to one compression ratio, you'll be getting just under two hours. So nearly twice as much. Now ProRes RAW does not have a more compressed option than their standard. However, B-RAW does. And at B-RAW 12 to one, you're going to be getting over four hours of footage per terabyte, which is even lower than if you were to have shot in a non-RAW 10-bit ProRes 422 codec. And for a lot of people, that's where the conversation ends. There's really no comparison when it comes to compression options when shooting in RAW, at least as far as B-RAW versus ProRes RAW is concerned. It's going to give you far more flexibility in compression options at the cost of slight image quality due to it being partially debayered during capture, unlike your more traditional RAW codecs like R3D, RE RAW, and even ProRes RAW. Now, how much this matters is dependent on you. If you're gonna go through the hassle of shooting in RAW in the first place, a lot of people out there would want the least compressed image possible, regardless of data rates. Especially if you know you're gonna be shooting something that's going to be projected onto a big screen, like a short or a feature film, in which case some of that image quality at capture may actually be apparent. There are pros and cons to using both, and the fact that they're now supported in DaVinci Resolve is generally speaking, a win for all of us. Especially since cameras like Nikon and Lumix are actually implementing ProRes RAW internally, while the only cameras that can shoot B-RAW internally, as of right now at least, are still just Blackmagic cameras. So what do you think? Was my testing flawed in some way that I was completely blind to? If so, let me know how much smarter you are than me in the comments. Okay, bye. 
farewell, friends.